Hello guys. <laughs> Wonders shall never cease to end. Finally, finally, this will shock you. What a white man I've just reviewed. The reason why Nigerian governments do not want Namdi Kano to be released. The forces that is behind Mazen Namdi Kano, it is too much. Even from his own place. The US and the UK, all of them joined together with the Northerners. Let me leave you to watch the video. Gas pipeline from Nigeria to Europe is nearing completion. The critical part is to connect it to Ala Igbo, specifically Imo State, that has about the biggest gas deposits in the world. Buhari signed the gas away as collateral for loan and used the money partly to develop other parts of Nigeria and partly to fund Fulani herds to prepare them for full-scale invasion and take over of Nigeria without investing any of the money in Igbo land where the gas is, to connect the pipeline to the primary source in Igbo land and continue to cheat them of their resource is not going to be easy. So the plan is to destabilize the region. It's been long in the making. This is an agreement with major Western powers. The first phase, flooding the region with killer herdsmen and killing young men of the region by mercenaries of one bloated militant, have had limited success. The second phase has just been tested, flooding the region with herdsmen in the guise and in the midst of IDP. Very soon, the Igbo will be painted in orchestrated write-ups all over the world as people unwelcoming to refugees and IDP. There will then be a massacre of IDP by the same planners, and it will be blamed on the Igbo, paving the way for full-scale military invasion. The refusal to release Mazi Namdi Kanu is part of it, and if he is released, he would be assassinated either by the gun to be blamed on rival pro Biafran groups or by the slow poison they have been administering on him. Both Britain and the U.S. are part of this plan, and they are not ready to let up. It all boils down to the resource called gas. They must have it by all means as an alternative to the Russian gas that has become a problem to them. They know that the Igbo are no pushover, hence the systematic weakening of Igbo cohesion and the grand plan, for such a plan to succeed, a high-level insider is needed. That is where a Southeast governor is playing his inglorious part. Hope Uzodima is judicially imposed on his state, and he knows that once his term finishes, he cannot step foot into his state, even into his village where he has massacred several people. This governor is the one facilitating everything. He paved the way for Buhari to start the plan, and he has continued with the present federal government. He will be rewarded with a relocation to the UK or to any other European city of his choice. And Bola Ahmed Tinubu. This is the most strategic politician to come out of Nigeria. He is positioning the Yoruba. Once the war starts in the southeast, the north will depend on him and his people for the continuation of any semblance of Nigeria. The north needs an outlet to the sea. They need Nigeria, in whatever form. Whether Nigeria survives in any form or not, the Yoruba would be strengthened by taking over the spaces both in the literal and other sense vacated by the Igbo. This is what the Yoruba did in the first war. Now the stakes are higher, the price is huger, and the eyes are more opened. Bola Ahmed Tinubu is using Mazi Namdi Kanu to play the political chess, and all these are related. Know this as a given. That is why they're paying Facebook billions upon billions of US dollars to stop this truth from coming out. Did Ojuku cause any war? Go on is alive, go and ask him. Did Ojuku cause any war? Ojuku went and negotiated restructuring with you. In Aburi. You came back, Britain told you not to agree because Britain realized that all the component units of Britain knows that if you go back to regionalism, you will have economic growth. The country will do very well. But Britain doesn't want it. That was why they even instigated the Nzoguku, so-called Nzoguku, saying they would bring that world over to become the head of state. They knew what was going to happen. They wanted to truncate the economic miracle of Dr. Michael Hill. But what I'm telling you are fast. Go and investigate for yourself. In the East, you had the fastest growing economy in the whole world, over 40% every year. In the West, Abolo was performing his own miracle as well. Even in the North, 
Ahmadu Bella and Tafabale were doing very well. You had all those massive industries in the north. You even had Alamajiris that were employed in the north, meaningfully employed, gainfully employed. They were all doing very well. Britain said, no, for us to control these people, we need to impoverish them. Let us introduce this war. That was a coup by Nzog. And after that, there was the massacre of, as usual, massacre of our people in the north. Ujuku said, I have to secure my land and my people. They said, no, let's go to Aburi to discuss it. Ujuku went to Aburi and agreed, restructuring. That's something now you're asking for, to tell you how foolish Nigerians are. They're very foolish. That same nonsense you're asking for now was discussed many years ago. Ujuku sat down in Aburi with Gowon and decided that regionalism was the best way forward, restructuring, going back to who you were, 1963 constitution, 1960-1963 constitution. Be on your own and pay tax to the central government, as they have in America, as they have even in Britain. Britain, you have Scotland that is almost independent, Wales, the same thing, everybody is free, but Britain doesn't want the same thing they're enjoying to happen in Nigeria. Why? Ask yourself that question. Anybody telling you about one Nigeria is your enemy? I'll prove it to you now. Ujupu negotiated devolution, regionalism. The North will be on their own, the West on their own, even Middle Belt on their own, sorry, Midwest on their own, and then the East on their own. It's the same one Nigeria. On, on their way to the airport before they boarded the aircraft, a call came from Lagos, from the British High Commissioner in Lagos to go on, telling go on not to agree. After having signed the agreement, that same go on you're looking at today, God kept me alive so that he can witness the destruction he will bring upon that very zoo called Nigeria. Go on said no. Do you know all the journalists in Nigeria, none of them have ever gone to, has ever gone to go on to ask him, why did he say no to Aburi? Aburi was restructuring. None of those agitating for restructuring right now has ever gone to go on or gone to Nigeria to say that Ujuku negotiated restructuring. What happened? They came back.